file setup and resolution is probably the simplest and most complicated part about making a comic, uh, but it is the foundation of the comic, so it is worth taking the time to learn how to do it. Hey, Walter here, and this is the second video in the How to Make a Comic series. So make sure you hit that sub button so you don't miss the next video, which is going to be about writing. Uh, but in this video, I wanted to cover some of the more technical aspects of making a comic. So it's gonna be a little bit more stale and not as artsy fartsy, but with all the questions I get about like anatomy, perspective, composition, I get just as many questions about like what type of paper do you draw on, like what resolution did I use, like what font size should I be using. So I wanted to make this quick video that kind of hits the high points of the technical stuff. Now with this, there's all different types of options that you can use and it would take way too long to tell you about all of them. So this is just gonna give you a quick overview of what you need to get started to make a high quality comic or at least to ask the right types of questions. And to help with that, down in the descriptions, there's gonna be a link to my template file that you can use to just start drawing your comic. All right, first question is paper size. So me, I use 11 by 17, otherwise known as American A3. And I got this from Marvel and DC Comics. This is what those guys used to draw on. Now, 11 by 17 is a pretty large piece of paper and that's gonna get shrunk down, shrunken down into a comic book size, which is like 6.625 inches by 10.25 inches. Yes, why do I know that? I don't know. <laughs> um, so, so it gets shrunken down into that size. Now, the benefit of working on a larger piece of paper than what's gonna be printed is one, because of the larger size, you can get some finer details in there without having to have the hands of a neurosurgeon. And two, when you take a large piece of artwork and shrink it down, like your artwork instantly looks better. Some kind of weird magic happens, I don't know. Like the, basically the imperfections that you saw in the large piece of artwork, you don't see in the small pieces of artwork. So anything that makes my art look better, I'm all for it. Now, this 11 by 17 size could be different for European comics or manga comics. So if you want to be closer to either of those types of comics, I would say just go get one of those comics, grab a ruler, measure it, and then extrapolate the size of the paper you would need from that. Number two, resolution which is 300 dpi whether you're scanning your original artwork or creating a digital file you want it to be 300 dpi um, this is the quality that most printers are going to print at so you are safe with 300 dpi and yes there are printers out there that can print at higher resolutions and these are going to be your offset printers which you wouldn't really be using unless you're going to print like a thousand two thousand copies of a book um, but even with that being said, my book, I had 300 DPI and I print offset and it looks gorgeous. Um, there is no blurriness to the image at all. Um, plus with 300 DPI, your file size is gonna be a lot smaller and thus your computer performance is gonna be a lot better if you're drawing and or coloring and or lettering, um, which I think is pretty important. Now, if you have a huge beast of a computer and unlimited file space, then go ahead and do 600 DPI if it makes you feel better, but you really don't need it to be that high. So I would say 300 DPI is more than enough if you ever plan on printing. And I would still do 300 DPI if you have no plans on printing um, because it will be better just in case you wanna do an ad or something like that. So 300 DPI, but if you're crazy, go ahead and do 600 DPI. All right, third question is safe, trim, and bleed. So the first thing you need to know about these is that when a comic is printed, it's printed on large sheets of paper, multiple pages on one sheet of paper. Then from that, those pages are cut into smaller sections and then all of that is put together. So when the pages are, are cut, it's not like exact, you know, like it kind of can shift a little bit. So that's where the, the safe, the trim, and the bleed come from. So the first one, safe, also called live, is basically where you want to put everything that is important, which would be the characters, the background, objects, lettering is super important. Make sure all of that is inside the safe live area. This is also where your panel borders would go, like it would touch up right there on the safe line. And then the next thing is the trim. This is the area that's gonna get cut by the blade. So anything in this section could get chopped and it might, you know, it's gonna trim off a little piece, but still you wouldn't wanna put anything that you wouldn't feel comfortable 
where it's missing, you know? Uh, so you definitely wouldn't want any lettering in this section because people aren't gonna be able to read your comic, which is kind of important. Uh, so don't put anything important in the trim area because it could get cut off. And then the final thing is the bleed. So the bleed is a little weird. Um, you're not gonna see the bleed. No matter what, like this part is gone. So you might ask, well, why do we have a bleed? Um, basically, if, if you're printing something where the artwork goes from edge to edge, right? It needs to cover up the entire image. The bleed um, basically is the way of guaranteeing that you won't have any uninked areas, right? You won't have any like white little areas showing up on the side. So like all of my comics go from, go from edge to edge. Um, so I have to fill up the bleed. Now this could be a, a whole bunch of just gunk. Like I could fill the bleed up with black, um, but I fill up I fill it up with art. I just draw off the edge of the paper, um, and that becomes my bleed. And it's you know it's like a quarter of an inch. So it's not like you have to do a whole bunch of artwork for the bleed, but that's basically what it is. It's just a way of guaranteeing that you're not going to have any little white areas on the edges of the paper. And you can simplify this too by measuring in from the, the left and the right side of the paper about three quarters of an inch, and maybe from the top like an inch or an inch and a quarter. And that little area that you measured in on will become your safe area. And then you can treat everything outside of it as a trim or a bleed. And that's just a veneer to bind. You don't have a quick way of measuring. Like I'll do that for like pinups and stuff. I'll just quickly throw in those lines and know that everything important needs to stay inside those lines. All right, fourth question is font. Okay, so font is really tricky. I can't tell you what size font to use because it's gonna depend on a whole bunch of stuff like how the font was created, how legible the font is, like how, how big the font was made when it was created, how tall the font is, what size file you're using. So that's all going to depend on like all of those different things. So I can't really tell you what font to use. You can start off with like 12 point font um, and that's a good place to start. Um, if you download my template, I have a font in there already that you can download from Blambot for free. And I'll have it set up for what I think is a good font size that is legible um, online and in print, uh, but not too big, not too small, hopefully. Um, so you can use that as a starting point. Um, the other thing you can do for fonts is just compare your comic uh, with a professional comic and see how the fonts compare. You can also take your page and print it out at print size on your printer and see if it's legible. If it's legible like on a cheaper home printer, then it's gonna be legible when you print it out at a professional printer. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about is file organization. Now you're gonna to have to kind of figure out what works best for you, but I figure I'd show you how I did it um, and keep my sanity because you can start getting a lot of files. So this is basically the way I do it. I have a top file, which basically is just comics and this is where all my comics go. And then under there, I have directories for all the different comics I'm working on. And then under there, I will either have the volume number or the name of the arc. Um, and then under there, I break it down into issues or chapters or episodes, however you wanna break it down. Then inside of that is basically where I have my files. And sometimes I'll add folders in there for the original ink work, the flats, the coloring, it depends on how you get it and like what works best for you. Um, so you can have different folders in there to break all that stuff up. Now that starts taking up a lot of disk space. Um, so sometimes you can be overly cautious, uh, which is what I am, but I use Dropbox. So I have a large amount of space on Dropbox, but eventually I'm gonna have to clean that up. Um, so, so those are all my levels down. And then the way that I actually name the files are I have the name of the comic, then I have the arc number or the arc name, and then I have the issue, and then I have the file. And basically this is the way for me to keep it all organized. I have the, the comic name and the arc name or number in there so I don't accidentally overwrite files that have the same uh, naming convention. And then if you'll notice too on the page number, I have the leading zeros in front. And the whole reason I do this is just to make sure the numbers order correctly. Um, because with computers, uh, one and 10 will sort first before the number two, which of course doesn't work. So that's why you do zero one, 
zero, two, and then 10. And that way the two will sort before the 10. Just weird computer stuff, whatever. All right, so that's all the technical crap out of the way. Now you can actually start arting and making some comic books. And then the TLDR of this entire video is just get my template in the description below. Or you could go out to a printing company and get their template, uh, Print Ninja or Kablam or two that come to mind. And then be sure to sub so that you don't miss the next video, which is gonna be about writing. All right, so what do you guys think? Is my file organization too crazy? or just the right amount of crazy. Be sure to like, link, love, hug, and sub for more sweet, sweet goodness. Peace.